It's not about motivation. When is new discipline? Wake up and win today. <laughs> discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with Boxer Jason Cunningham, now a retired fighter and boxing trainer. How does that sound? Um, yeah, I'm adapting, adapting, getting used to it. I've just been to Costa, I've had a cheese and bean toasty and uh, a flat white, so something that I'm not used to, but I'm quite enjoying. And that's the life of a trainer, I'm assuming you yeah. can just go across to Costa. Yeah, exactly. Tell people what to do. Uh, like that hill tomorrow, I'll be still there with a coffee again. Get up it, it's not me doing it, it's a little bit easier this side of ropes. And, I don't get it in face, which is another bonus, so yeah, it's all right. It's a big promotion because last time I came here, obviously you were still fighting, but you was like vacuuming the gym floors and yeah. uh, keeping the gym clean and now uh, you're a coach. Yeah, that, listen, that's not changed, like I said, the humble, still uh, still a role to be done, so still doing my bits and bobs with my OCD, but um, yeah, like we're hands on now, uh, I'm enjoying my new role. Uh, obviously, me and Steffi work closely together. Same with Ray, I've been around good trainers, so he kind of picked things up and um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying working with fighters and helping them hopefully achieve their goals. I uh, just want to uh, do a, a quick uh, wrap up before we talk about your coaching uh, side of things. You know, you had a really, really good career. You won pretty much everything apart from a world title. Yeah. And not only that, you did it in different weight divisions. It wasn't just one weight division. Yeah. Um, how do you reflect on your career? Do you think you overachieved, underachieved? No, I always said, after I won ABAs in 2011, I always said I believed I was good enough and I would have been written off back then, I would have off even winning an ABA title, but I always said I was good enough to win a European title. I achieved that, so I kind of achieved my goal. Obviously, when you get to that stage, I beat Yafai and then the Brad Foster and with Frank Warren, then you're trying to reach more and you're always trying to climb. We're all, we're all trying to better ourselves, aren't we, and, you know, and achieve that next step, if you like. But I achieved what I set out to do. Uh, I'm satisfied. I never had nothing given. Everything we've done on the road, if you like, in the away corner. Never had it given, never had it easy. So, no, I'm satisfied, uh, content, which is why I can think I can happily walk away and move on to my next chapter. Definitely. So, and I, it's unfortunate because fighters like you don't really get celebrated enough, and I, and I think it's it's a it's a shame because people only tend to talk about the guys that are, you know, headlining every week in the home corner. Uh, I'm just going to drop some names because most boxing fans will have heard of these names. They're just you know, the kind of names you you fought. Obviously, Ross Birkinshaw back in the day, Jason Booth, uh, even that didn't go your way, but you yeah. still fought him. Uh, Brett Fido, you know, I mean, most kids don't want to fight that guy. He's, he's knocked a lot of uh, upcoming fighters out. Khaled Yafai, you fought him back in the day, he lost yeah. on points. Ashley Lane, uh, who's come back and done some stuff as well. Um, Reese Bellotti, he stopped you in 2017. Yeah. Uh, he stopped you, and I bet people are saying you need to pack it up. Yeah. Jordan Gill, you fought on back to back. Uh, Paul Economides, I've said, I hope I said his name right. Michael Conlon, you fought Michael Conlon. Josh Kennedy, um, and then Gamal Yafai, Brad Foster, Terry. Le I can't see his say his surname, but he was 16 and 0. Yeah. Tete, uh, Miguel Gonzalez, and Liam Davis. That's some resume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's some names here. You think you recap over even sorry, Jeff, I former world champion. Uh, Mick, very, very you know, uh, proven pro and you know, brilliant amateur as well. Jordan Gill, like you said there about packing in. Believe it or not, after that Jordan Gill fight, um, my dad said, I think you should think about hanging gloves up now. Um, that was 2018. We're here in 2000 and, uh, go on, 2024 now. Obviously, I've just retired in the last year, but yeah, and my dad says, uh, I think you know, you've got a family, this and that, and um, I think you should think about giving it up. And obviously, I had no intention whatsoever. I was still always believed in, you know, things, you know, it's rough for the smooth. And I think as long as you're learning from your, your losses or your mistakes, then, you know, there's always a way back. And I kindly told my dad to. In, in a, yeah, as you can imagine, in an explicit word, I never, you know, I love my dad and he's always been the sport to me, but I, the first time I heard told him, I said, Dad, do one, basically, I'm carrying on. And uh, now all these years later, I look back and I said, see, Dad, I told you I should have carried on, didn't I? And he can't, he just laughs now, he can't really say anything, can he? So, yeah, it turned out all right in the end. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, been in with some, some good names. Um, a lot of them in the away corner. Uh, most of them I was writ off against and, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm quite happy enough. And uh, like you said there, man, you ended your career with 32 wins and seven losses. Uh, for me personally, I think Gamal Yafai was uh, your crowning night because I remember you was a massive underdog and most people expected yeah. you just to get stopped in a few rounds. Yeah. That was like one of the best performances I've seen in the way corner that, that year anyway. Yeah. Uh, it was remarkable. So, um, you know, just for the fans out there, again, a lot of uh, misconceptions. 
on paper you've won a lot of titles you fought on tv loads of times most people might be thinking that you're you know you're retiring financially stable all that kind of stuff you know what's the realities of boxing you know how are things for you now things are good uh, I'm not a stupid kid, so anything I did get, then I've invested. So I, I'm I'm all right. I can you know I just work in the gym, just a steady little number. Um, like I say I put my money into things, so I've, I've got you know assets, I've got money coming in, so I'm all right. I I, uh, I spent it wisely, if you like. Got a good head on my shoulders. Um, so in terms of that, yeah, I'm all right, but I'm no millionaire. So um, you know, it's like it's not the it's not like professional football, is it? When they're getting paid, you know, ridiculous amounts of money week in week out. Um, and I've probably gone out at the wrong time because obviously these Saudis have come in. I was also the Saudi job. It's, it would have been nice to drop onto one of them and then. But no, I'm happy. I'm content. Uh, I live comfortably enough. Um, and like I say, I'm, I'm, I mean, as long as you enjoy yourself. And for me, as long as my cogs are turning, my mind's, you know, it's not a case I finish boxing. I'm like, what am I going to do now? Like, you know, what am I going to do? Or going down the wrong, wrong path. I'm, you know, I've always been involved with boxing, uh, working with kids, with amateurs. I've got a mini eaters class, young kids. Uh, and I've always worked in that, that job role anyway, that setting if like I used to work with naughty kids through boxing and stuff. So I'm always there. And then we've got the pros. Obviously, I manage to train. So I'm, I'm, I'm busier than I've ever been. I haven't really got time to train myself half the time. Um, so no, I'm, I'm, I'm content. I'm happy. Um, financially, I'm okay. And, um, you know, we've got a bright future, all being well. Most importantly, you've left with your faculties intact as well, which is yeah, uh, you yeah, know, well, I, which, can, yeah I can string conversations together, can't as well. So that's never been uh, that's never been an issue. So yeah, you become a coach. Um, you, you've got an interesting assignment coming up. Uh, the son of Ricky Hatton, uh, Campbell Hatton, uh, fighting Jimmy Joe Flint. Uh, interesting fight. A lot of people are picking Jimmy Joe to. Uh, uh, I don't know whether to cut. Is it an upset if he wins, or is he? I should I say he's expected um, not to win. Well, listen on paper, obviously the, the, the male Campbell, or full, full respect to him, and the Athens, Ricky alone, you know, a legend. You know, I grew up watching Ricky. Um, he was my idol when I reason I got into boxing. At the time, I think the him and Joe Calzaghe between them both, and you know, I looked up to them both. So to be like sharing the ring, if you like, in the con coaching and all, yeah. But with that family alone, it's that special. Uh, but it gives an extra lot more ambition. Then this is, you know, this this is the this is the defining fight with Jimmy. This is the fight where he beats Campbell Atten. It stays with him forever. This is the one. No matter what he does in his career, all oh, lads in pub on a Saturday night, Friday night. Ah, he did. He did Rick Atten's lad him, or you know, did Campbell Atten. So that's how it is. And, and obviously, we're we're very confident. Uh, we've got a few ideas and game plans in place. Um, that's all down to me, and that, that's all it, it's, it's me that rides on that. That's my responsibility. So I want to make sure that I'm doing everything on point where you know I am doing the right thing and, and we're happy. Not only that, like I spoke to you previously just before this interview, I don't think I know everything. Uh, I know enough, especially boxing ability and stuff as well. Um, and, you know, and I've been, been in a few rough duels myself. Um, we know Jimmy Joe can fight, but I look to the likes of Steffi, Ray Doyle, who's coming, coming later on today to watch the spar with Jimmy Joe. I want their advice as well. You know, we're all in it together. This is a team effort, and there's one thing I am, and I always have been in my career. It's organised, so I want them there. We all need to be on the same page. We all, you know, I'll study this obsessively, really, and, and that's that's how I am. And yeah, we're confident. Uh, on paper, probably a 50-50 fight. Looking at Jimmy Joe's last um, last performance, um, you know, um, a draw. That's probably how this fight's come around. That he's got this opportunity. Should they be favouring Campbell Atten? We're hoping we, you know, we're obviously the the old public and, and the boxing world that they are writing him off. Um, we like that. We like that underdog story and gives us that little extra bit more to, you know, to, to prove everybody wrong. So uh, yeah, 50-50 fight. Jimmy Joe's got to perform on the night, and uh, you know, because nobody's giving him anything in his favour. He's a matchroom fighter. He's a legend's son. Um, so we've got to we've got to do everything in our power to make sure we win and win convincingly. Definitely so, and I, I tell you what, credit to Campbell as well because. Um, a lot of people probably thought he'll just keep fighting guys from foreign countries with winning records. Yeah. Credit to him for going, you know, starting at, uh, you know, with the belt that you, the most, you know, you would have expected him fighting for a WBA regular or yeah. international title. But he's going doing it the domestic route, which I, I do like, and I respect yeah. him for wanting to take Jimmy Joe on in a in a fight that most people are perceiving as a 50-50. Yeah, it's the old school route. I've done it myself, haven't I? The area, then the English, the British, the come of the European. It's not done that often nowadays. It's like I say, it's the old school route, and it's more or less, you know, it doesn't happen as often as it should do. Um, not only that, like you said there, regarding that particular title, I know that that was the first title that Ricky Atten won uh, in his pro career. So they're looking at it all together, his son following in the footsteps. I look at that as a lot of pressure on his shoulders because he's got to do that. He's got to do what his dad's done. Um, not only that, he's stepped up. There are a few decisions that have gone his way that you could have said shouldn't have gone his way or could have possibly been a draw. You know, and um, he's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders. I've, you know, I've, I've had an interview before and I mentioned this like, 
um, with the name, the family name, and living up to his dad's reputation. He's always going to have them eyes on him and that pressure on his shoulder. And like I said, I, I believe we've got him at the right time. He's stepping up to 10 rounds, championship distance, so Jimmy Joe's got the experience there. Um, he's got to get this title. You know, he, it's his dad's got it, he's got to do this. So all the pressure for me is, is on Campbell Atten. Um So yeah, he's got some, some heavyweight carrying on them shoulders and uh, we'll see if he performs on the night. I will look forward to it. Um... Anything else you want to add, Jason, before I let you go? Um, no, not really. I'm just quite happy in the role I'm doing. Uh, my career's been and gone, and I'm, I can happily say I'll never be one of those guys who, who can't let it go, and he, he has to come back. I'm, I'm done and dusted. I'm enjoying my role. Um, and, yeah, may it continue. I've all been well. I hope I get you know, many, many champions myself. I've got some good fighters. We're boxing next week. Uh, I've signed a few now. Uh, I've got Journeyman. You know, means like I mean, if we work close together, um, we've got Jeremy, I've got a few prospects, got Ellie Elliwell boxing next week, three and oh, will become four and oh. Uh, she's one to keep an eye on. Uh, Harry, the Hatchet Johnson, who I've signed as well, he's making his debut. So, all these fighters, that's where I started from, and I'm hoping to do my best for them, training and managing to, to get them, you know, to uh, where they want to be and achieve their goals. Well, Jason, I wish you all the best. Like I said, you are one of the success stories of British boxing. I hope you, uh, you wish you all the success in. Uh, in boxing as a trainer. Yep, thank you very much. Listen, I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals.